Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Julie Hardesty. Uh, I'm a metadata analyst at Indiana University. And uh, to give the visual context that we're doing, uh, I'm a white female in my 40s with long brown hair, wearing a black shirt and a gray sweater, and I'm sitting in a big room with green walls. Uh, so I am going to give the Hyrax update. Um, and I also want to acknowledge that I am speaking to you today uh, from the indigenous homelands of the Miami, the Delaware, the Potawatomi and the Shawnee people. Uh, I want to honor the communities native to this region in Indiana and recognize that Indiana University is built on these homelands and resources. And these people are the past, present and future caretakers of this land. So to start off, uh, I'm going to do a little intro on what is Hyrax. So if you're new to the community and Sam Vera Connect, uh, welcome. We are glad that you're here. Um, Hyrax is a front end based on the Sam Vera framework. Uh, it provides a user interface for common repository features. So it offers the ability to create repository object types on demand, um, deposit uh, content via multiple configurable workflows, and describe content with uh, flexible metadata. Um, several optional features uh, can be turned on in an administrative dashboard um, or added through plugins. Uh, and it's implemented as a Rails engine. So it may be the base of or added to a Rails application. Uh, along with that, there are branding abilities that are available. Um, it incorporates uh, Blacklight for search and discovery and, um, and enables uh, IIIF for uh, digital object viewing. So um, there is a site that has information available on that uh, about Hyrax, hyrax.samvera.org. And uh, the, little, uh, the little green circle with the white Hyrax face is, uh, is the logo that we have for Hyrax. Uh, in addition, um, we, there is a demonstration site that is available uh, and is being hosted right now by Data Curation Experts, DCE. And that's available at newrax.curationexperts.com. Uh, so, and this is, uh, you, can, you can actually go to this site and try searching for things that are there. Um, you can sign up for an account and see what the administration dashboard looks like, uh, create a collection, add a work, uh, and, and uh, try things out. And at this point, I think what the site is showing is the release candidate uh, for the, the release that is, um, that is being prepared to come out soon. And I'll get into that here in just a little bit. Um, so, and another thing that I want to share is uh, the code base that exists um, on, on GitHub. It's under the Samvera GitHub area uh, and it's called Hyrax. Uh, and the current stable release that is available is Hyrax 2.9, just to kind of situate you in, in the numbers. Um, so, and now I'm, uh, I'm gonna do a little bit, uh, I'm gonna go into a little bit about what the Hyrax product owner is supposed to do. And I'm gonna do this because We've actually been without a Hyrax product owner for uh, for a while. It's been uh, like a year and a half or two years. It's it's been it's been a bit, and uh, development work has been continuing. But there has been no product owner in that role. And there's been in that time, there's been a lot of discussion in the community about what the Hyrax product owner um, should do and can reasonably manage. And uh, and a lot of that is because it is a volunteer role from within the community. Um, so the responsibilities that I have listed here are actually from the call that was that was put out um, earlier this year uh, for the Hyrax product owner, and um, the the things that we're we're seeing the Hyrax product owner um, taking on are organizing and setting priorities for Hyrax development, and uh, a lot of that involves working with the Hyrax maintenance working group, which is led by uh, Tom Johnson, the technical lead. Uh, and um, developers that, um, that are working from within the community um, as part of that working group. Uh, and it also involves um, fi figuring out a roadmap for Hyrax, where, where Hyrax is a software application is heading next, and the roadmaps alignment group um, that looks at uh, not, only, not only Hyrax, but other, other areas of, Sam, of the Samvera community and roadmap development um, in, as a whole for the community. Hyrax is one of those things that, uh, that is taken into account with the roadmaps alignment group. So, uh, but also the, the product owner for Hyrax is also working with that group uh, um, in a big way. Uh, so in addition to that, uh, the product owner for Hyrax is chairing the Hyrax interest group. And that uh, is a group that is somewhat reformulated from what it was previously. It was more about advising the roadmap, um, the roadmap group. 
Uh, and now it is, uh, it is envisioned to be an, more of an interest group like the other interest groups uh, within the community. So uh, monthly meetings, if, there, to, if there's interest, if you have an interest in catching up on what, what is happening with Hyrax, um, that, is, that is gonna be the place to jump in and see what the latest is. Um, also uh, getting, getting, uh, getting information and sharing uh, across implementations that are happening in, within the community. Um, so that'll be, uh, that'll be hopefully what we're, what we're doing with the, with the interest group going forward. So, um, so in that regard, the product owner is doing a lot of engaging with the Samvera community. Um, and um, uh, the, the time that's expected for the product owner uh, is uh, in this volunteer role is about 20% uh, of time for each week. So it's about one day per week um, to work on, on, these, on these things. So uh, who is this Hyrax product owner? Uh, that's me, um, Julie Hardesty. I'm at Indiana University and a little bit about where I'm coming from here. Um, I've worked on the Avalon Media System project, which is another project within the Samvera community. I've been a metadata specialist on that project since 2012, a subject matter expert. Um, and I've also been a member of the Samvera Metadata Interest Group since 2015. And I facilitated that group for a few years, that interest group. So uh, I'm picturing the Hyrax interest group working along the same lines of how we've had the metadata interest group working. So that sort of engagement and, um, and wanting the community to be involved. Um, and uh, I'm a certified Agile Scrum Master. So I've got a little bit of certification in the Agile process and I've been involved in the Agile process for a while. Um, and I served as a product owner recently for some Arclight development work that's happened at IU. So I've had just a little, a little taste of product ownership in a way, um, but I am here to learn and to help move Hyrax along as a software application and to serve the community and serve, uh, serve the Hyrax product's needs uh, and also steward uh, both the Hyrax software application forward as well as the Hyrax product owner role forward into the future. Uh, and what I want to uh, talk about next is um, some of the areas of focus. And I'm gonna start off talking about people, the people priorities that I think exist. And I've kind of, I think I've ordered these in, uh, in, a, in a sense in priority order, uh, but you know, I'm, this, is, this is the start of a conversation. So uh, I think this is, uh, this is where I am now, but it doesn't necessarily mean this is where things stay. But I think the top, uh, the top thing at my list in terms of um, what people are interested in is looking at what the partners are interested in getting out of Hyrax. Uh, and almost equally to that are, um, places that are implementing Hyrax, what sorts of things and what sorts of interests and needs they have for, from, from Hyrax as a software application, what things they're experiencing. Uh, and in that same sense, um, Haiku interests, places that are using Haiku are also using Hyrax. And so those, those interests and concerns are also, um, are also valuable to what I need to know about. Um, and similarly, uh, next up, I think, is developer interests. There's a lot of work that's been happening on the back end to try and adjust how things work um, uh, with, with back end storage for Hyrax. And I think that uh, is, a, is, is a way to make things easier for developers uh, working with Hyrax, doing things with Hyrax. And I want to make sure that those sorts of interests are still, uh, are still, um, are still front and center. Um, and then potential Hyrax adopters. I think the folks that are looking at Hyrax but haven't decided whether or not to use it yet, I think that is another area that I'm, I'm interested in staying in touch with and learning more about if I can. Um, uh, what, is, what is it that would make, uh, make, make someone decide that Hyrax is something, to, is something worth trying? So, uh, and then um, at the end of all this, it might, I, have, I have my own interests with Hyrax uh, centering around metadata and usability and accessibility. And I, I kind of think that um, a lot of the things that I'm interested in are also areas that these other groups uh, have an interest in as well. So, um, so that's, that's what I'm thinking of in terms of places, people that, people that will be a focus. Um, and then software priorities uh, in terms of what's happening right now. Uh, the immediate work for Hyrax is the Hyrax 3.0 release, uh, and that is in the works. It's, um, it's in process right now. There's been uh, quality assurance testing that's happened recently, um, and there have been th some things that have come up with that that are being worked through right now. Uh, but I do think that there is a, there is a, there is a release insight. So 
uh, that's that's happening. Um, and that release is has several things um, happening with it. And I'm just reading from what was what's been listed on the site, and I'm still learning about what all 3.0 is doing. But um, there'll be updates to support Rails 5.2 and Ruby 2.7. Um, there are changes to uh, default metadata that will use better properties and set things up better for basic required information about uh, digital objects. Uh, and there are updates to IIIF uh, that support file versioning and transparent PNGs. And then um, there's an introduction of Valkyrie and Wings to the code base. And that is something that's gonna be an ongoing priority even after Hyrax 3 is released. Uh, so um, for Wings, uh, what, what, this, what this is meaning, my understanding of what this is meaning is that right now, uh, connections are coded to make calls to Fedora using Active Fedora. Uh, but with Wings, those calls can be changed to use the Valkyrized adapter way of making calls to Fedora instead. Uh, and that, so that code is there, uh, but it needs to be tested. And um, I know Lynette Rail uh, at Cornell University has done some testing along those lines, and I think is going to be talking about that experience uh, later on in San Vera Connect. And I'm really interested to see what that, what that talk entails, um, but there needs to be more testing. So there's still an ongoing priority to do that. Uh, and this testing is um, going to allow us to figure out how the Valkyrie, uh, how, how future adapters can be added to allow for other backend connections in addition to the adapter that connects to Fedora. So uh, being able to connect to something like Postgres or a different backend storage system. Um, so that's going to be ongoing work that will continue. Uh, and then once Hyrax 3 is out, um, obviously if there's any bugs or outstanding issues that arise from Hyrax 3, we'll be dealing with those. Uh, and then other areas that I'm interested in moving towards with soft in, in terms of software are looking at flexible metadata, um, more work types available uh, by default, uh, and then uh, really focusing in on what Haiku needs for Hyrax and um, also looking at usability and accessibility uh, and checking in on what's happening with that. So I think throughout all of this, um, there's going to be, uh, I'm going to be, I'm very excited that Heather Greer Klein is here as the community manager. Um, there's going to be, I'm going to be doing a lot of communicating with her, I'm sure. Um, and then working with the Hyrax interest group, uh, sharing what, sharing what's happening with Hyrax and getting feedback on that from that interest group. Uh, and then working with the roadmaps alignment group uh, to ensure that what we're doing with Hyrax is fitting in with, with what Sam, what the Sam Vera community is, is doing. Uh, so, but I'm also possibly interested in, uh, with the community manager, if Heather is, is, is interested in this, um, in looking at uh, community surveys regarding Hyrax and getting some, getting some potentially more quantifiable information about what Hyrax is, um, uh, is what the Hyrax needs are within the community. Um, and also possibly looking externally, uh, at those potential Hyrax adopters. Um, institutional repository and digital collection management needs. Just discussing that uh, with external, uh, with, with folks that are external to the community um, that uh, might be looking in to see what, what Hyrax is doing or what the San Vera community is doing. Um, so uh, the, the other part that I'm wanting to uh, work on as the Hyrax product owner here is uh, looking at this role um, long term. So I am, uh, what I've agreed to is to serve for two years in this role, starting now, uh, going through October 2022. So kind of two Sam Vera connects. Um, so, and so this, I think this means that uh, we'd be starting to engage the community for the next Hyrax product owner in the spring or summer of 2022. Um, and, um, I'm wanting to set that up. Uh, that's kind of how things worked for me. The call came out earlier in this in the year, like December, January, uh, and I was able to uh, make a decision in the spring, uh, late spring, that this was something that I could do. I wanted to do it, and I was able to figure out that it was something that I could do. But I still, even when I after I agreed to do this, I still needed some time to adjust my schedule to allow for that um, that one day a week. 20% time uh, to be able to focus on, um, on Hyrax work. So um, having some ramp up time for that to uh, over the last few months has been, uh, has been important for me to kind of get into what's happening um, and change things around with my own schedule. Um, so I'm hoping in the spring or summer of 2022 that we've, we, we have someone that's interested in, in, in coming in as the next Hyrax product owner and um, doing that ramp up work uh, for, uh, for changing out to that next Hyrax product owner at Sam Vera Connect in October 2022. 
And so part of this stewarding this role forward is um, trying to put together some documentation about what the role is doing, uh, resources that are necessary uh, to understand uh, as the product owner um, so that someone can come in and catch up on what's happening and then move things forward with Hyrex as a software product. And it is possible to, act, to pass the baton as it were. Um, so I also kind of wanted to share things that I'm thinking about in terms of Hyrex as, uh, as a product, what, it, what, I'm, what I would like to see it be. Um, so I, I want it to be something that's easy to install and try. I think being able to try this out easily is paramount. Um, I also think the, the demonstration site is fantastic and I wanna make sure that that remains something that's stable and available and is useful for what we need, what we need it for. Um, I'm also interested in um, looking at multiple work types available by default. So beyond generic work and image, um, I know there's been discussions of things like an audiovisual work. Uh, the Avalon team has been looking at that. So um, seeing if that sort of thing can happen uh, so that there, it's available uh, with Hyrax on install, I think would be, uh, would be really, really helpful. Um, and then looking at the metadata strategy so that we have something that is uh, easier to configure for metadata fields per work type. And that flexible metadata is going to be something I think the uh, figuring out how that work can be integrated into Hyrax is going to be uh, is going to be great for um, for that for Hyrax as a product. And um, I'm also interested in looking at more controlled vocabulary choices out of the box on more fields like subject, um, making making things like that just easier to turn on, easier to choose from from options that are available. Um, questioning authority uh, has has gotten us very far along in doing that, so I'm I'm really excited to contemplate what more we can do there, uh, and then also this uh, this getting back to valkyrization, this, uh, getting closer to an easy switch out uh, on the back end. Um, so at least having something where you can choose between Fedora and one other thing for back end out of the box with Hyrax. Um, so. And in contemplating what that list is, when I, once I wrote it out, um, my sense is that a lot of these things are actually already happening um, in some way, either with different implementations uh, within the community or with um, Hyrax development efforts that are already happening. Um, so I think that's that is a that is a really good sign. And just I want to become uh, better aware of what local work is happening, and I'm hoping the Hyrax interest group is one major way that we can we can make that happen. Uh, and I think a lot of that can be helpful to further the, the things that the San Vera community wants with Hyrax. Um, so my, my goals here are to understand what's happening and what the needs are and then organize what we've got going on and uh, engage the community uh, moving forward. So uh, thank you. And uh, are, if there are questions or comments at this point, I think is there, there's, a few, there's a few minutes before we get to break time here. If anyone has any questions, feel free to use the Q&A tool and I can um, ask Julie the questions. Julie, so there's a question, when will the Hyrax interest group meetings be held? Uh, the Hyrax interest group meetings are once a month and I believe they happen on the second Tuesday right now, the second Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. I believe is when they're scheduled. Someone can probably check me on that. I know it's Tuesday, but I, and I think it's the second one. So, and I'll be, um, part of what I'm gonna be doing is, is sending out notices to the community uh, group lists to announce when the, when, the, when the meetings are happening. So we get some, we get some, some regular notice about that going out um, with agendas and with notes afterwards. <laughs> 